Yo, what's up guys, and welcome to an all-new series in NHL 17. So as you guys know, I love making rosters, so I came up with this with this cool idea to make CHL alumni teams. So in each episode, you guys get to choose whichever CHL team you want me to make, and I make that team with old and new players who've played for them. So example, if we did the London Knights, we'd have players like Patrick Kane, Corey Perry, Daryl Sittler, Mitch Marner, Max Domi, etc., um, so for this episode, just cause it's the first episode, I chose the team, so we're doing the Ottawa 67s in this episode. Um, I created my own teams with them as well, just cause you can't put overage players into the CHL teams, just cause you could only be like 16 to 18 or 16 to 19 years of age, I believe. Um, or 16 to 20 maybe. So, anyways, let's show you guys what the jerseys look like first before we get into the roster. So, team uniform. I basically kind of made it with the similar colors to the 67s colors, so the red, the black, and the white. And then I decided just to use the O collegiate font and put it in the center, like with the Montreal Canadiens jersey. Um, I find it looks really nice. This is one, the home one. Also, you can see I used the Minnesota Wild font just because... I think when I was a fan way back in the day of the 67s, they used to use that type of font. So that's their home jersey. Here is their away jersey. It's just basically reversed. Looks pretty nice. And then here is their alternate jersey, which is a nice black one. Uh, they did have a black jersey, a red one, and a white one back when I watched. So that's why I did them like this. I don't know how their jerseys are now because I don't follow the OHL or any of the CHL teams. But I might get into it eventually. So that is what the team uniforms look like. So now let's head over to the roster or the yeah, the L line screen and I'll show you guys what the roster looks like. Okay guys, so here is the Ottawa 67's alumni roster. So on the first line you have Gary Roberts, who obviously was one of the biggest well, one big player who played for Toronto, Calgary. A couple other teams, I believe, in between there, Tampa Bay. Um, in his time with the 67s, I wrote down all their stats, all these players. Um, if I could find him, where is he? I think I just saw him. Okay, so he had 234 points in 184 games for the 67s. Uh, he played for them from 1982 to 1986. Then you have Logan Couture, who actually was playing when I started... Or, yeah, I started watching the 67s, so I actually got to see a few games with Logan Couture and Jamie McGinn before they got drafted by the San Jose Sharks. Uh, Logan Couture put up how much points? He put up... Uh, where did I put it? Sorry about this. Um, Logan Couture put up... Does that even say his name here? Oh yeah, there it is. So he put up 287 points in 232 games. So a lot of these players are over a point per game, just so you guys know. Uh, Logan Kutcher played from them uh, for them from 2005 to 2009. So he started playing for the 67s like the year I pretty much stopped watching, I think. Then you also have Tyler Toffoli, who's one of the most recent uh, 67s players. Uh, he played for them from... Where is it? Sorry again. He played for them uh, from 2008 to 2012. He put up 333 points in 252 games, so well over a point per game, almost 100 points over a point per game. Um, then you also have, on the second line, you have Bobby Smith, who was one of the original 67s players. He played for them from... Um, 1975 to 1978, but he also put up like one of the most points, uh, like for most play uh, points for a player, uh, for a 67s player like all time. He put up a total of 385 points in only 187 games. Um, he was a first overall pick actually in I think it was in the WHA or something draft 1977. He was drafted by the Minnesota North Stars, I believe. He played for, like, the Montreal Canadiens and that sort of stuff. Some of you might know him. Um, yeah, but he was a very good player in the NHL. So, there he is. He's a lot older than 50. It's just, that's the age I could only put it at. So, that's him. Then you also have Sean Monaghan, who played with them kind of recently. So, 
he put up 203 points in 185 games with the 67s. He played with them from only 2010 to 2013 before being drafted by the Calgary Flames, and he still plays there, obviously. Then you got Jamie McGinn, who was there when, I, like I said, when Logan Couture was there. <clears throat> uh, he got drafted by the San Jose Sharks. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, he put up 226 points in 243 games, which is kind of crazy because in the NHL, he's more of a bottom six kind of player. So um, in the CHL, you get a lot more points than in the NHL. So he also played with them from 2004 to 2008. So he was there the year before Kutcher came over and then he stopped the year before Kutcher left. So uh, those two were together for quite a while and then early in their careers in San Jose. Then on the third line, you got Shane Prince, who obviously now still plays for the Islanders. He was drafted by the Ottawa Senators. Um, he didn't really get to play much with the Sens, though. And he put up 191 points in 142 games, so once again, over a point per game. He played with them from 2010 to 2012. Um, then you got Michael Pekka, who originally actually started his CHL career in a different OHL team. I can't remember who. I think it was... I think it might have been the Sudbury Wolves, but I'm not 100% sure. Eventually, he came over to the 67s, though, and he played a total of how much? He played a total of 137 games with them, but he put up 240 points, so over 100 points more in games played. So, and he played with them from 1992 to 1994, so only two years, um, not very long at all. Then you got Sean Donovan, who also played for the Ottawa Centers in the Calgary Flames, the Boston Bruins, teams like that, San Jose. Um, he was a very good penalty killer in the NHL, um, and I remember him being also kind of like an instigating kind of guy. Um, he put up a total of where is it? He put up a total of 155 points in 186 games, so he was actually less than a point per game. But he was still pretty good uh, considering he's a third liner or was a third liner in the NHL. Um, he also played with them from 1991 to 1995. So he played a, a lot longer there. He played some in 95 with San Jose. But then I guess they sent him back to the CHL. So he uh, finished off the season, I believe, in the 67s. Then you got probably the most recent uh, Ottawa 67s player. And that would be Travis Konechny. Uh, Travis Konechny was also one of the best in points, uh, point productions, I believe. Um, he put up 183 points in 152 games with the Ottawa 67s. Um, he played with them from 2013 to 2016, and then he eventually got traded. And, yeah, I don't remember where it was. I think it was to the Sarnia Sting. But, yeah, so he's probably the most recent player that's played for the 67s. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get drafted by the Ottawa Senators, and it turns out the Philadelphia Flyers uh, got him after the Sens even, so the Sens passed on him, which is kind of surprising because I think he's a pretty decent prospect. Then you also got Andrew Castles, who um, he coached a bit in the NHL, or maybe not the NHL, he coached somewhere. Um, he is the dad of, An what is his name, not Andrew Castles, um of Cole Castles, who plays for the Vancouver Canucks, I believe. Um, he put up 377 points in only 183 games, so he was probably the best, one of the best NHLers for points in uh, the 67s. Um, he put up a, or he played from for them from 1986 to 1989, so only three years. And then you got Brian Bickle, who was actually playing as well when I was a fan of the 67s. I think I might have got to meet him a couple times. I don't remember. I met a couple players like back in those days, like Danny Batagio and stuff like that. People that you guys probably wouldn't even recognize. But yeah, Brian Bickle was a part of the 67's organization. Eventually he got traded, though. Um, he put up a total of... Where is it again? He put up a total of 157 points in 216 games uh, with the 67's. So he actually was a good p uh, point producer. Um, in the NHL, he didn't do as much, but now he retired because he's got multiple sclerosis, so hopefully his battle with that goes good. 
Now we get on to the defensive core. And the defensive core is very nice here as well. We have Dennis Potvin, who's arguably one of the best defensemen of all time. Uh, not as good as Bobby Orr, but still very good. He was a big part of the Islanders dynasty who won the cup like four years in a row. Um, he played for the 67s back in like, I think he was one of the first alumni members probably that's ever played for them. So he played with, uh, in the first season with the 67s from 1967 to 1973. Uh, the Ottawa 67s also, I forgot to mention, only won two championship trophies. Um, one of those coming in 1984 and one in 1989. So they won the Memorial Cup in those seasons. Haven't won it since, which is kind of surprising since they've had some pretty good players. Um, but yeah, Dennis Popfin, arguably the best, uh, well, probably the best 67s defenseman that's ever played. So then you also got Doug Wilson, who's an Ottawa native as well. He's another very good um, defenseman. Played his time in Chicago and San Jose, I believe, and that was it. Um, Doug Wilson put up a total of 254 points in 156 games with the 67s. Um, he played with them from 1974 to 1977. So that's the top two defensive pairing. Very nice one. Both offensive defensemen I put because they both actually put up, like, I think over a thousand points in the NHL or close to it. The next you get Nick Boynton, who was actually a ninth overall draft pick by the uh, Boston Bruins, I think, or it might have been some other team, and then he got traded. But he was he was a decent prospect, but he never turned out to be anything huge in the NHL. He only played like 11 years, uh, I believe, retired with the Stanley Cup win when Chicago beat the Flyers. So yeah, he played for like Chicago, Boston, I think Arizona, maybe maybe Florida. I don't know. Um, but he uh, he wasn't really anything huge, but he didn't did make the NHL and played like 500 games or so. Then you got Brian Campbell, who obviously still plays for the Chicago Blackhawks. He's obviously also played for Florida, San Jose, Buffalo, and yeah, he was a pretty good piece in the 67s organization. Um, he put up a total of 210 points in 260 games, which is very good for a defenseman. Only 50 games pretty much without a point. He played with them from 1995 to 1999. Um, I forgot to mention Nick Boynton's stats, I think. Yeah, I did. So he put up 185 points in 218 games in the CHL. And that's why probably people thought he was going to be a good player in the NHL, but he did not turn out to be that way. He only played with them from 1995 to 1999. Then you got one of the most recent uh, defensive players in the 67s organization. You got Cody Ceci. Uh, obviously, he plays for the Ottawa Senators. He's also an Ottawa native, so he's a pretty local boy, I should say. Um, in the 67s organization, he played a total of 238 games and put up 146 points. Um, eventually, he was traded, I believe, to... It might have been like Owen Sound or something like that, but I could be wrong with that. But yeah, he played with them from 2009 to 2013, and then he got drafted by his hometown, Ottawa Centers. Then you got Brendan Bell, who currently is a free agent in this game. Uh, he played with the 67s for a short bit of his career, or, well, a bit of his CHL career, I think his entire CHL career. He put up 171 points in 238 games uh, from 1999 to 2003. Um, currently, he's been playing around in the European leagues a bit. He hasn't really done much. In, he didn't do really much in the NHL. He put up less than 100 points in the NHL. But um, I remember him playing for the Ottawa Senators for a bit, and he was pretty decent penalty killer and stuff like that. He's listed as an offensive defenseman in this game, but I don't know if he's really that offensive. Um, so that is the defensive core. Then you got the goaltenders and the best goaltender uh, definitely in um, Ottawa 67's history is Peter Mrazek. Even though he played there most recently, he's probably the best because they haven't really had much goaltending prospects get into the NHL. So he went 74, 37, and 10 in 132 games with the 67's, so well above 500 record. He played with them from 2009 to 2012. And then you got Kevin Weeks, who was an analyst recently on CBC Hockey Night in Canada. I don't know where he is now, but 
he is he played for the 67s for a bit. I think he also played for another team as well. Uh, he only played 41 games with them from 1994 to 1995 with a really bad record of 13, 23, and 4. So that is the players that are on the team. Now we have a bunch of scratch players, so I'm going to have to go with each position first, I guess, because it's not going to show them all. So first we got Darren Pang, who's also another analyst kind of guy. Um, Darren Pang played with them from 1982 to 1984 with a, a well, he also, it didn't say his stats for 1983-84, but it said his stats for 82-83. So he went 28-14-3 and three that season in the 47 games. Um, I don't know about the next season because it didn't list his stats for some reason on the Hockey DB. So that is Darren Pang. Then next, we'll go over to the defensive scratch players. I don't think there's any, actually. There might be just forward scratch players. Yeah, so we don't have any more defensive players. So offense, there's a lot of scratch players. So let's start with the left wingers. So you got Chris Simon, who's just an asshole of a player. He's long retired, I think. Um, he played recently in the KHL. He actually put up a 29-goal season once with the Washington Capitals, but he was just an asshole in his later years. It's like he was getting suspended for like 20-something games, and yeah, that sort of stuff. So that's Chris Simon. Uh, a little stat that's also kind of interesting about Chris Simon is he actually put up 104 points in 115 games. So despite being that asshole of a player, he almost put up a point per game in the... OHL. Then you got Jamie McGinn's brother, Ty McGinn. He only played with the 67s for a short bit, like very short, and then he decided to go over to the QMJHL and play for the, uh, what was it, not the Quebec Ramparts, uh, it was the Gatineau Olympic, I believe. Um, he put up 11 points in 59 games. I just added him here because he's Jamie McGinn's brother. Then you got Randy Cunningworth, who played with them way back in the day. He was no more for being like a grinder kind of guy and he was also a coach for the Rochester Americans multiple seasons and that sort of idea he was he's been a good AHL coach I believe mostly uh he played with them from where did I put it from 1979 to 1981 and he also put up 169 points in 130 games so he was over a point per game as well and he actually had some decent seasons in the NHL too. So he's got some decent offensive stats. Then you also have Michael Latta who is currently, um, well, he played for Washington recently. He was drafted by Nashville. He also played for the LA Kings farm team and the Chicago Blackhawks farm team. He's not much of an anything of a player. He's just more of a penalty kill kind of grinder guy. Um, he didn't play really much either with the 67s. He played only 73 games and put up 49 points. Um, he played from 2007 to 2009. Then next you got the center players. You got a lot of them as well. You got Adam Creighton, who was a like a, an enforcer kind of guy almost in the NHL. He had some good offensive seasons as well. He put up 241 points in 194 games in the 67s organization. He played from 1981 to 1985. Then you also got Mark Bell, who was drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks and played with them for a couple years. Eventually, he decided just to fall out of the NHL and go over to Europe and play for a bit. I think he's retired now, but he played the last season, I believe. But he's only like 36 years of age. He's not that old, but he just really didn't get to play that much in the NHL. So he's more of a European player, I guess, if you could say that. Um, but he put up 207 points in 212 games, so once again, another almost point-per-game player. And he played with them from 1996 to 2000. Then you got my favorite player that's ever played for the 67s, and that is Corey Locke. Uh, when I was watching the 67s, he was like the best player on the ice, and I thought this kid was going to be a stud in the NHL. Well, it turns out this guy never produced in the NHL, and he eventually just became a European player um, playing in like Switzerland, I think, and those type of leagues. He also played a lot in the AHL, but he was a very good player with the 67s. Um, one of the best, actually, 67s players that's ever played for them as he put up 312 points in only 186 games. And he played with them from 2001 to 2004. So he had over 300 points just with this team. And then in the NHL, he probably put up, yeah, he put up less than 100 NHL points. So 
kind of a shame that he didn't turn out to be anything better, but he was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens, played a bit with the Ottawa Senators, I think. I don't know who else. I think he was traded to the Minnesota Wild a couple times too. So, yeah, that's Corey Locke. Then you also got Alan McCauley, who's had a really short career. He's only 40 years of age now, and he played a bit in with the 67s. He played a bit in NHL with Toronto, uh, San Jose. He was originally drafted by the New Jersey Devils, but he, I don't think he ever actually played for them. He put up 284 points in 208 games from 1993 to 1997. Then you also got Tyler Grayovic, who I just added because he's another current NHLer that played for the 67s. Um, he obviously plays now for the Minnesota Wild. Um, he's not the best of a player either. Uh, Grayovic put up only 92 points in 198 games from 2009 to 2013. Final D right wingers, you got Grant Marshall as one of them. He was a bit of a grinder, kind of enforcer guy in the NHL. He scored some goals too. Wasn't that bad of a player overall wise. Um, but yeah, he put up 142 points in 117 games with the 67. So another over point per game player, even though he was a grinder. He played with them from 1990 to 1993. So that is the alumni Ottawa 67s guys. Um, I hope you like this little episode or little video. Um, I'm going to keep this team built and then uh, once you guys suggest a team, so make sure you do that in the comments down below right now. Like just say whatever team you want. Like it could be Barry Colts, it could be the Ramuski Oceanic, that type of thing. And then I'll try and get one of these made and that will be next episode. So um, yeah, but I'll keep this team made and then maybe eventually once we create like 10 teams or something then we can maybe do like a little tournament between between the alumni teams and see which one's better that type of idea so anyways hope you guys like this idea and hope you like this video so thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time